Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Oh, you're raising your eyebrow? No. Nope. <laughs> Already? I haven't even begun. <laughs> well, anyways, today is going to... Be, oh, I know, he's just covering his face. Don't do that. Today, it's going to be a long one, I have a feeling. Yesterday, I thought it was going to be longer than what it was, but today, I really have a feeling it's going to be long. I've got lots to tell you. And I've got a little video to show you too, so you better get a drink. I've got mine. So you better get a hot drink or a cold drink so you can wet your whistle. So that you can whistle. Like, I guess I better wet mine. <laughs> Can't whistle. <laughs> Try again. Nope. Mm, let's try again. It's still not good. Oh, forget it. Yep, that's, that's the whistle that I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, can you do that one? No, don't worry about it. You don't have to. Just get something and watch your whistle. Okay, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to first show you what I did. I was trying to clean, which I did do a little bit, very little bit. And I ran across a towel that my mother had cut. My mom was in this... In this um, stage where she was anything that was kind of new or pretty darn new if it was a towel she was cutting them in half why I don't know I asked her one day when I came home from work and she was cutting up a lot of bath towels and I said mommy why are you cutting these she goes I don't know well she cut some kitchen towels too and I happened to come across a kitchen towel let me give Jim my coffee there you go I came across a kitchen towel and what came to my mind I was thinking of Pamela. She was making toppers for the kitchen towels. So I decided I would make a topper for this towel that my mother had cut. It has yellow in it, as you can see. And so I used yellow, and it has brown, so I used brown. And so I made a topper for my kitchen towel. And I love this pattern. I used a little bit, oh, excuse me, there's the coffee. I used a little bit smaller hook. I always like, I like, I like smaller hooks. I don't know why I do. She used a bigger hook than what I used, but I like the size hook that I used. I used, I think, an F. When I used to do um, Afghans, I either used an F hook. In fact, I think I did use an F hook. Or a G hook for a lot of things. Those are the hooks I like. So those are the hooks that I seem to gravitate to. So I used those. And I love the way it turned out. I, it's it's pretty, isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty. Very pretty, very nice. Okay, that was what I did instead of clean. I found this and decided <laughs> I'd crochet instead. Well, let's go to the little video. And in your little, my little video, you're going to see the chickens. You're going to see a puffball. And you're going to see potatoes. So let's go there. Go potty, Jake. Hi, Mr. Brown. We get to let Brownie out of the cage today. A couple of the girls still are on top, and a couple are over here, and you get to come out of jail today there, little brown, little brown one. Okay, there she goes, and there goes that one of them, they're playing out here, be nice, there you go girls, Let's eat. you can eat too, there you go, the rest of them all went out. Mr. Brown, you are, and you're still up there? Hello there, lady. You're a pretty big girl, so be careful when you fly out. You gotta go potty. 
I meant to take the camera out with me when I picked these puff balls. There was a delivery man here today, and he said that these are edible, so they're like mushrooms. So I'm going to cook them up. Aren't they? They're huge. He took a few home for himself, and I forgot to take your outside. But I'm going to cook these, and I will let you know what they taste like. But this is the puff ball. He says, puff balls are just puff balls. That there's no, it's not like mushrooms where you have to choose which one is good and which one is bad. A puff ball is a puff ball. I cut the puff ball in half, and it's real spongy inside, very spongy. Then I cut it in slices like this to fry it up. He says to put it with some butter. Well, instead of butter, I'm putting it with baking grease. But you can put it with butter and fry it. We'll taste it when it's done. Well, this is supper tonight. Puff balls from the yard and a little steak that we had in the freezer. Too bad Emily's not here. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we have an extra one. Well, as you see, I've got the chicks back in the house. Why did I bring them back in the house? Well, last night it rained. It was lightning and thundering, and it, the temperature dropped from in the upper 70s to the upper 60s or lower 60s. It was actually pretty cold. So I decided I would just bring them in the house. They were all cuddled nicely and warm when I picked them up. My phone is ringing, so I gotta go. Sorry, chickies, gotta leave. Come on, girls. They, they respond to the tapping. I always have this one that wants to sit in the back. She must be the lowest of the, of the batch. Did you eat? Come on. Right down here. Are oh, you pecking me? Ouch, that hurts. Don't bite me. Silly little thing. The one that is being very, very curious, this one. That one is Honey Boo Boo. Paige named that one, Honey Boo Boo. This one is Isabella. Hey, Honey Boo Boo. These two are the, are the friendliest of the bunch. Are you another Mr. Brown tapping the camera? Hmm? You're too cute. So they'll stay in the house tonight. If the temperature goes back up to where I want it to be at the night time, I'll put them back out. Because my potatoes have died off and the melon is spreading everywhere, I'm gonna dig up my potatoes. I've got my potatoes are over here. You can see where the vines have died. See the dead vines? They are really dead. Usually you would use a, a fork of some sort, but because I told Jim no, I don't want one. And we'll move the melon vines out of the way for a few minutes. Ooh, there's a little, and there's their little red potatoes is what I planted. That's just a teeny weeny. We'll see what I get, if I get many. These were from the store, so if I don't get many, it's because I wasn't meant to get many. Sure you don't want a fork? I'm sure. Yep. It's not bad for just my shadow or somebody's shadow, my shadow. Your shadow. Not bad for just a few little pieces of potato. I had one potato and I cut it in three pieces. Yep, very good. Yep. You want to make sure you hill your potatoes because see the difference in color? This one here has got some greenness to it because it hits sunlight. 
The one next to it didn't hit sunlight. In the video, I told you about a man that was visiting. He was delivering. We're having a steel roof put on, and he was delivering the stuff. And he says, I have a question for you. And he wanted to know if he could pick some of the puff balls. And I said, sure. And he says, they're edible. And I says, they are. And I said, I didn't even know I had any puff balls. He says, with all the rain that we had yesterday, it was really stormy. So that's why I brought the chickens in. They're in the house right now. I will bring them back out probably tomorrow if the weather is nice. I hope it's nice. It's supposed and, to be. And if the, if the temperature at night stays like 70, I don't want it to go below 70. Then I will let them stay outside. They were toasty warm when I went and got them. I got up at it was three, three. No, it no, was. It was, it was no. By the time you saw me, I woke up. It was three something. It was before four. Mm. <clears throat> then I woke up and I thought, oh, I'll try to go back to sleep. No, I can't go back to sleep. I got to go down and get those chickens. So it was three. Some, it was just before four that I woke up. Three. When you came downstairs, it was about 20 after 4. Well, I was dilly-dallying. I was really trying <laughs> to stay up. I kept thinking, those chickens are... I hope I, when I go out there, I find them alive. Because it was kind of scary. We had thunder and lightning, and the temperature just dropped. It went way down from what it was when they went to bed. And I was a little worried that they would get too cold and you know chicks baby chicks can't take the cold so right now they're in the house but I don't have the heat lamp on them I want them to get used to the temperatures of the house the house though is fairly warm still mm -hmm. and when it gets outside about 70 degrees or warmer they'll be happy little happy little chicks you know we could always put the heating pad in the bottom of that house if you wanted if you could plug it in. Can you we plug, can it, plug in? it in? We can plug it in. I've got long enough extension cord. <laughs> I didn't think of that. If you want that. I could do that. Then I wouldn't have to worry about them at all. They could go back out. And they could be in that house yeah. and they could stay warm. We could do that. I think we'll do that. I had the heating pad under their little case there for a while. I think that would be a good idea. We'll put that okay. heating we'll pad do in that. there. And then they can go out and spend the night out there and get out in the morning like everybody else. If they wish to come out the door, I'll open the door and they can decide if they want to come out or not or stay in. It's up to them. We talked about a barber pole. Did you know? Have you ever seen a barber pole? I have mm, seen them. There's a there's few, a few around. still around. Not, we, not, we have one lot, barber pole in our town still. In Not in our town, the town next to us. Yeah. On the side street there, there's a one barber that has a pole still. But do you know why that pole was red and white? Good question. And why beauty shops don't have one of those poles? <laughs> <laughs> well, years ago, I'll tell you in case you don't know. Many, many years. Like, yeah, many, uh, like back in the 1100s. Century. Way back, yeah. way back. When barbers were considered more than just a barber. They were like the doctor of the town. And if you had a problem, you'd go see that barber because he would pull your tooth. If the tooth was the problem, he'd cut off your arm if the arm was a problem. Or he would even bleed, he'd let you... Bloodletting. Blood bloodletting. He would do the bloodletting. The priests and the monks used to do that, but they were told not to do that anymore. So they stopped doing it. And so the barbers took it up and they were doing it. But they knew exactly how far they had to go. They had, even at that time, realized that you could only lose just so much blood in, before it would kill you. And do you know why in the U.S. a lot of the barber poles are now red, white, and blue instead of just red and white? And you, oh, wait, i got to go back a little bit. Back up, back, back up. up. Back up, The poles were red and white because they used to take their towels after they did the surgery or the bloodletting or the tooth pulling, and the towels were white but they would be have blood on them. Even when they washed them off, they were kind of bloody still looking. And they used to hang them on that pole. And sometimes the wind would wrap it around. What? Also, why did they use a pole? I don't know. Why did they use the pole? Oh, the they, pole. So the patient could grip oh, the pole. Oh, that's and, right. And, 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 and so makes that, the veins pop. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
I forgot about that part. Yes, and the poles in the United States are red, white, and blue because of the blue veins in your... Some think it's patriotic because it's red, white, and blue. But no, it was because the veins are blue and that's what they used to blood let with. Yeah, per. In my video, I know. <laughs> In my video, I said, it's too bad Emily's not here. Well, guess what? Emily showed up, and Emily had her steak. She enjoyed eating it. She, uh, she did. And I was going to tell you, to those puff balls, they're not that good. They're not They're good. okay. They're all right. I asked Jim, should I make it again? Uh, not next week. How about next month? Mm, not next month. How about next year? Maybe next year. <laughs> That's how good they were. They weren't good. Um, kind of like eating tofu. Yeah. And I'm not crazy about tofu either. They say that the puff ball is like a tofu. It will pick up the flavor. Whatever you cook it with, it will pick it up. So, with cooking it with the bacon grease, it kind of picked up the bacon grease, but it's real spongy. It's not very, it's not, it doesn't taste like a mush, marsh, uh, mushroom. Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say marshmallow. It's squishy like a marshmallow, but it's supposed to taste like a mushroom. It doesn't taste it doesn't like a mushroom. It doesn't taste like either one. <laughs> no, it was horrible. It was not the best. I did watch a recipe that where they took the, the mushroom, or the puff ball, I mean, and they dipped it in egg and flour or breadcrumbs and they fried it, and it's supposed to be tastier. I'm like gonna a try, French toast. I'm going to try that and see if I like it. If you've got texture problems, you won't like this stuff because it's really, mm -hmm. really spongy. It's a funny feeling in the mouth. So if you like don't like gushy, don't eat. It's don't like eat really it. soft, soggy bread. Yeah, it's worse. That's what I think. It when was worse. when if somebody makes a French toast and it's not really cooked all the way through and the the center is kind of spongy and yeah, it was ishy. Yeah, it was I don't... really ishy. Yes. Well, I believe that is everything. My nose is starting to itch. Oh no, <laughs> that means I'm gonna kiss a fool. I guess I better go kiss Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'll kiss me. In a minute, we'll say goodbye and we'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye.